Welcome, you're listening to the Leading Up Podcast. My name is VJ Williams here with my friend and pastor, Kevin Jack. Thank you for joining us and taking time out of your day to become a better leader. If you're new, hello, we're so glad you're here. Uh, welcome, and uh, we release a new episode every Wednesday. Easiest way to remember that is to download it on your favorite podcast platform and subscribe. And also share this with a friend on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. You won't believe how that helps get this in the hands of so many leaders like you. Also, rate and review on Apple Podcasts and visit leadinghope.online. Get updates, find out more about the Leading Hope community. I rushed all the way through that because <laughs> I cannot wait to continue with part two. This unexpected part uh, two. Yeah, uh, we ran out of time. We knew it was important. This is really important stuff to us, and we hope it helps somebody else with the process of yeah. what we went through or that or we're really going through. Yep. Uh, and this is uh, episode 218, Behind the Name Change, part two. Yeah, part so, two. so last week... Well, which is like last week to you, we didn't realize this was a two-parter until we got into it. So like to us, this is 30 seconds ago. <laughs> this was uh, maybe, yeah, maybe so, 90 seconds. Full clarity, yeah. we're just recording this back to back because we didn't know this was heading into two. <laughs> we have the same shirts on still. There it is. There it is. <laughs> so so we just walked through real quickly um, yeah. that we wanted to give you a behind the scenes look for the name change. Um, we wanted to walk you through the decision we were making or the difficulty of it, of making very discernment based decisions in spiritual communities and clarifying the role of using our gifting. We talked about the decision, which just to refresh real quick is, um, do the benefits for expansion and cultural clarity outweigh the pain of the process and the risk of upsetting people and then just the most important pieces and you go back and listen to last week of what it looked like to run people through rebrand focus groups and what it looked like to do a community survey yeah and the most important things this is like right this is like the dot 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 now now we're picking it up from here yep right now so here was the interesting thing yeah. is on the front end of that work i was we don't need a name change like I, I did not think it was important. I did not think it was necessary. You did, correct. Someone else may not have. And uh, you're not the only one. Yeah. Like several people, several people on our board were like, "Yep, yep, it needs to happen." Yeah, that's like, a great point. That's a great point. Yeah, I, I felt like anytime it was brought up, I was about the only one who was saying, "I don't think we need it." Yeah, like almost defiant. <laughs> I wouldn't. Where's the camera shot? I was about to I was about to disagree with you about me being defiant, yeah. which would be me being defiant about being yeah, called defiant. I know. I was waiting for it. I was you got waiting. me in a pickle there. I don't know what to do about it. Good job, though. You didn't bite. It's like when someone says, like, <laughs> <laughs> like you're competitive. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to. No, I'm not. <laughs> Stop being competitive about being competitive. Ugh. So here's the. So this is the information that it yeah. gave me, though. It's good. Is it gave me, first off, is that. 90% of the people, and we use this incredible cross-section of different people, 90% of the people in the rebrand focus groups believed that the culture and vision were so distinct that we were a different church. Yeah. That was really important for me to understand. I learned, I'll get back to some of the stories because I think that's really important. I learned from the community survey that what people are looking for in a church does not necessarily match their view of Highland Park. And I'm going to get into, like, I don't think that's important at all because I think our church has a great reputation in the community. That's Absolutely. not what I'm saying at all. 100%. 100%. Okay? But, like, it doesn't necessarily, it's not the clear match. Yeah. Um, the other side of it is they don't know us by our name. Yeah. So, like, they don't even know who we were. <laughs> right. So, if anything, changing the name and the exposure that that would create would make people who don't go to church more aware right. of what is happening here. Yes. Because of, and so it's I went, almost a tool at that point. Yep. Now I learned these. Uh, here's some of the stories that I got to learn, and this is like this is the part where just like uh, we thought about outsourcing the process, and you were like pivoting to me, You're like no, you need to do it. Yeah. And I'm so, and I just didn't at first. I didn't really have an understanding, which is kind of why we're doing this. Yeah. So hopefully other people can helpfully understand the process of getting touch points in the different communities right. that are impacted by this decision but i learned so much about our people i learned so much about this church um a uh, lady in our church uh who's been here for over 30 years yeah uh one of the things she shared with me is she she just gets in there and she says this has always been a church in which the entire family rallies around the next generation because if we lose our kids we've lost everything yeah 
I was standing there like, oh my word. I guess that's incredible. It's amazing. I had uh, I had lunch with the guy who was three pastors before me. Dinner with the guy who was three pastors before me. And he shared with me this story that the church had just recently come out of a crisis uh, shortly before he became pastor. And he said when he's in the interview meeting, uh, he refers to it, he says, this matriarch of the church, like, uh, he says, I'm about to get up and go after the interview. And she says, Pastor, would you hold on? Said, I just need to ask you, if you come here, what are you going to do to shake us up to begin to care about lost people again? So good. Because over this period of time of the crisis, we got self-protective and we got focused on ourselves. And we need to be shook up to care about lost people again. So good. And so like, I'm... What, what, and those are... Even more stories. You're just highlighting yeah. just a couple, but several, several stories. But from from exposing myself to the process, I was able to grasp the thread of culture and vision that has been driving this church from the start yeah. that I was previously unaware of. Yeah, that's so good. And the other part, too, of that, just is just, to, just on the tail end of that, if I could, Go. is that there is, in, in, in what we're trying to accomplish, we don't we're not always needing precedent yeah but there was correct and you i don't know if that was something i'm getting ahead of you no there yeah but this church has done this before yep and so while you don't always need precedent you certainly don't ignore it when you have it absolutely and so if you want to explain that piece yeah so the church used to be on uh off of south florida and it was referred to as the florida heights church of the nazarene and so i'm able to talk to some people because i knew they had moved yeah like 30 years ago to 4777 lakeland highlands road yep i said why they said well because the communities were growing in south lakeland and we needed to be where the people were so good so i said so your mission changed so your name changed they said yep <laughs> thought that's so important your mission changed so the name changed. And it I was would just even say like the vision changed. Yeah, and it was just like this moment where it's just like, now I get it. Because it's the same thing that's happening again. Yeah. And to be able to walk people through, and I think that's so important to be because we always want like it's everything. I don't know how to say this. Like I feel like leaders feel this need to do a new thing that no one's done. And the more yeah. I find out the new things, if you're listening, I'm air quoting heavy right now. Yeah. The new things I think I'm doing are actually just really old things that people forgot about. That's so good. And so I, I go like the way we, I won't go far on this just real quick, but like the way we disciple people of serving and on mission instead of collecting them on couches is what Ooh. Jesus did. Wow. Like it is the same model he used. Yeah. And people are like, oh, this is like innovative. Yeah. Like, no, it's actually, let me tell you how innovative it is. It's so ancient. Everybody forgot about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it still works. No, it's so true. It happens all the time. And so that was just like, I felt like, I felt like walking through this, I felt like I got dialed into the history of this community in a way that I never could have otherwise. And I was blown away by There's, the stories was, that I had. There was no way you could have had this level of intimacy yeah. and understanding without this process, which led to an outcome. But without Absolutely. an out, I mean, it was the outcome of its own. Yep. It was uh, unrehearsed. So then let me walk through. So I've got all that information yep. now. And so I pull in a group together because I'm not going to make decisions like that in isolation. And several people walked with me through different pieces. I was the only one who like kind of carried the baton the whole way through on that side. But several people, they, they were engaged. They were involved yeah. the whole way through. And I just kind of presented all the information I had. And I, I clarified. I said, we are not deciding today yeah. what the new name is. Right. We're deciding should it happen. Because if we're deciding what it is, we're going to get caught in our preferences. Yeah. And this is a, sight. and I, I said it real simply, why we do this is far more important than what it is or what it isn't. So good. And so that was, uh, I scheduled that meeting for 90 minutes. Yep. And that meeting took 20 minutes. It was a 20, I remember that and meeting. 15 minutes was me presenting the information. A room full of people, <laughs> yep. a room full of people, and 15 minutes in, you had... Yeah, you've laid out what you've basically laid out in the podcast for that team. Yeah, I just said this is what I've learned, this is what I've heard, this is yes. what I see. What do you think? Do you think we need to change the name? Everyone, 
Yep. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Right down the line. Okay, I guess we're done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like we thought there would be long drawn out yep. conversation, good, bad, everything in between yep. about you know what's the right thing to do and it was almost instantaneously people were like, "When do we start?" Yeah. Like they were like, what, "Okay, yep, we're doing it. like what do we do? Like what are we starting? What what's yep. the process look like?" So that's so that's the process like by and large when we said like yeah. for people like we want you to get a glimpse of what this looks like for us to navigate through it, why we went through it, the different touch points, how we navigated those environments. Yeah. That's the process. Can you uh, can you just so everyone who's listening understands, can you talk us from the date you wanted to start the process to up to this point right now, how long that period was because it was significant. I began designing the process Process we'd have to walk through in April of last year. So we're yeah, we we're February now. Yeah, and, and we have just announced it. Yeah, and and then here's the then here's the key thing is um, when we when we actually decided the name, I'm I don't want this where maybe where I'm different from others. Sure. Like if it is so, we said the parameters. Our parameters were it's not geographic based. Right. We're gonna. We're going to keep for this location Highland Park as the geographic designator. Because it is. Yeah, because this area, it's, no, it's known here Highland as Highland Park. City. And so, like, it works. And then also, like, if someone referred to it as Highland Park, I don't want them to feel bad about that. They're right. Yeah, they're like, oh, I go to Highland Park. That's cool. Call us Highland Park. I don't, I'm not going to fight you over that. Like, Of course not. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. <laughs> and so, um, but when it got to the name change, I didn't want to, because I'd seen people walk through processes before of like people submitted suggestions and then they did this and then, and then everybody voted. And I was like, I don't want that. I don't want a preference based name where then some people are upset that they didn't get the name that they wanted. Yeah. Like, I don't think that works. I agree. And I, I felt like we, our, our criteria was... It's Google search unique. Okay. So we want to own the URL and not have to be on the second page. And it is non-geographic based. And then our, my big thing is that it's true to our culture and vision. Like when people hear what it is, they go, that's us. That's me. Like, so I think that's so important. So do you want me to walk through that like actual name change? I think it's important if you just hit on some of the highlights there. Yeah. Uh, because I remember that, that team, just getting back into the story, that team met. 90 minutes, 20 minutes later, everyone's yes. The pro the new, the next part of the process begins. This is important. Yeah. Uh, and, and then this is where, uh, where, where we actually have to do some really deep diving and all those things, Google, you know, you know, all the things you just said. So walk us through that piece. Yeah. So this was just all played out in conversation over the course of one meeting. Yeah. And, um, and so it was interesting the things we walked through cause we just kind of went through, Hey, it's got to meet that two criteria. And then what what do we think? What stands out? Who are we? We had already, uh, just to interject there, during this whole time, we had already um, introduced into the culture a brand before the new brand. This is... Which is what you really... Should, you should talk about this. Which is... Because uh, so, I can't. Yeah, so when we got here, there was not some... Uh, there was not something that we could tangibly run with or towards, and you need both. Yep. Right. And we were like, there's no palette, color palette. And this is more of the branding stuff behind it. There was nothing there. So whatever was on our walls, whatever was on our website, whatever those things were, we took down almost immediately from day one. This is before we even thought it would name change or, or brand change. Correct. We just knew it wasn't going to be that in five years from now. Yes. So let's not wait five years from now. Let's just introduce a new concept for things. Then the vision came. Well, in the vision, and you talk about Chris MacArthur came up with this statement, or he said this statement, yeah. obsessed with the one. Yep. And everyone, we wrote it in the vision, and you can talk about that, and I think you have in other podcasts, but that that stuck. Yep. Like when and everybody is, knew in the moment that he said it, it stuck. It just, bam. Yeah. When I read the vision for the first time, and I wasn't part of that. That was the board yep. that did this. A group of how many people? Uh, Twelve. Twelve people sat in a room all day. They came up with this. When, you when I read the vision and I read that, I could not stop thinking about it. Yep. It like I became obsessed with obsessed with the one. Yes. And it just stuck there. So before we even considered a name change or a branding, we'd already started moving towards this thing about one. Mm -hmm. Obsessed with one. We called our baptism wall obsessed with the one. Our shirt said, I am the one. Yep. Like for those who are coming out of, of the water from death to life. Yep. Right. Redeemed and resurrected. Like it started already 
like it was an obsession already. Yep. And it was uh, with the one. So this thing happened way before us. So we fell almost into it at this time. Yep. Do you want to go from there? I'm sure oh I'm yeah. Pieces. No, I I think that's fan. So we just kind of really rallied around that idea, not yeah. a name. Right, not a name. And we kind of laughed that we said uh, we is uh, we saw this uh, clip online where it said uh, if Nike developed a hotel, you know exactly what that hotel would look like. If Hyatt developed a shoe, you'd have no idea what that would look like. No clue. And they were communicating the difference between a logo and a brand. Yeah. That a brand already gives you a picture. The thing we laughed at is we said, we have a new brand. Yes. We don't have a logo. Right. We don't have a name this is that really we've attached important. to it. Yeah. And so it was interesting because what had happened in our community is people really centered themselves around this idea of who we are. Yes. But we didn't have anything to we hold didn't on no to. Visual representation yeah. of what that really was, other than a culture, which is exactly which is better. Exactly. Which is way better. But then we have to match a, a brand and a logo to a culture. And the cool part is is just real quick about this, is if uh, you've been around church world, there yep. the problem with this identity crisis coming in a logo form is that once you start empowering volunteers everyone thinks they need a logo in order to be effective yeah right and so churches aren't brand in churches they're a church of brands and we know that we don't want to be that we want to be a branded church not a church of brands and so that was the center along with those other things like it has to it has to be a a, a rally cry yep that we know is who we are and then we need to come up from there yep and everything flows from that yep Absolutely. So that's what you said was really important. Yeah. And I don't want people to miss that as they're looking at branding and to say like, because there's, uh, I think at times a desire for leaders to be empowering and to give freedom. But if, if it is no longer aligned, your, your empowering is now working against all of you. It has come together. Yeah. And it does. You are now not aligned by definition. Exactly. So then, so then like when we actually got in the time to decide the name, we were already clear on who we are. Yeah. And I think that's maybe the thing I could want to reiterate to everyone and make it really clear is sometimes people think you change the name or the logo to create a new culture. The culture completely shifted. Absolutely. And then yes. at the end, yes. almost like icing on the top of the cake yeah. is when the name and logo came in. Yeah. And so we got in that meeting and it was, it was probably an hour. Like think of that. It was an hour. And the things that came out really clear is we said, first off, we want to be known by a ch as a church. Yeah. Like we want that prominent in our name. Yeah. We didn't realize how we prominent are, yeah. on the front end of the discussion. Um, we we are that, excited to tell someone we yeah. are part of a church. Uh, the thing that was like people have obviously rallied around and latched onto the most was this idea of obsessed with the one. And we tried it. We're like, there's so many one churches. There's this. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't work. And so we tried to go away from it. And we finally came back to like, if it's anything other than one, our people are going to go, what? Yeah. Like that feels weird that we didn't. And then I don't remember who it was. Someone had the idea and said, what if we flip it instead yeah. of one church? I think that was you. Oh, oh I'll take credit for yeah. it. Yeah, it, <laughs> it was you. Uh, just to flip it and say, what if we're church for the one? Yep. And instead of saying like, oh, it's our name and then church, if we in the name clarify what we're about yeah. and what we're here for. Yeah. And then I, as somebody like played out in the conversation of like, yeah, somebody, they go, oh, what church do you go to? Oh, I go to church for the one. Oh, what's that? It's a church for you. Yeah. That's why we're here. Yes. For you, because you're the one. It's like an instant conversation starter yeah. for someone who could enter into faith almost in that moment yep and it just changes the, the 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 future and it was like one of those moments when it was said everybody in the room went yep that's it yep yep and it was like there no vote yeah no what's your best preference it was like we knew it it clicked yeah we had because god had been doing something all along, all along and we're just like trying to put our finger on it to figure it out right. and once we had it we went yep yeah that's what he's been doing and the doing. cool part in that same meeting and this is just a side fun note for anybody who likes these little awkward things that yeah. happen in these things is uh, i had the computer open and i'm searching all the new domains and see what's you know i don't want you know it's got to be we yep. have some criteria google search unique yeah we're going on there and all of a sudden i guess the i don't know how long it'd been out but there's a dot one extension now for websites and church for the was available so yep. it's church for the dot 
one Which is as awesome. the new website. So at that point, we were like, God's at least aligned this enough for us to feel good yep. about what he's doing and what we should be following. And so, like, just to sum up this now two-part podcast series. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're out of 20 <laughs> we're minutes. Full, is to go, like, the name was changed in a 60-minute meeting. Yes. After talking to over 300 people and researching in depth and a nine month process yeah. and a lot of pain and discovery throughout that. Yep. That when we finally got to it, deciding the name was a piece of cake, but I hope to give people a, just a little sense of like, Hey, this is what it looks like to go on this process of discovery yeah. at, at every step of the way. I was open hand to be yeah. able to go. I was actually anti I'm saying I'm willing to be for. And if I think a leader walks into that going, we're going to do a rebrand group to figure out the name change. I already know what it is and I already know it's going to happen. Yeah. That's not helpful. That's great. And I'm sure it's, someone might have questions. If you do, just email us. We'd love yeah, to help. We'd out. love to help you. You know, we, that's that's why this podcast exists. And it's exactly what we want to be able to do for people is help other people. Yep. So um, thank you for being here. If you're new to the podcast or haven't yet subscribed, it mean the world to us if you did that now. Also, post about it, rate and review, rate and review or both. Uh, and also... Um, Right, and re- I already said that uh, because it helps us, and that's good. <laughs> we, we 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 love hearing your stories of how the podcast is working in your life and business. If you have a story, visit leadinghope.online and send that to us. And obviously, if you have questions about this podcast or the name change or behind the scenes of the name change, let us know. And remember, everyone has 20 minutes to learn to become a better leader. Make it count. Woo.